and money, maybe not as much, you know, he's a powerful guy, but in a yeah. different way. So why do you think, yeah. and a smart guy, why do you think Bill went on arena side? Why, you know, we kind of know why Greg stayed with Persco. Why, why do you think uh, Billy Cotolo went with arena? Well, I'll tell you generally, the guys that went to Vic arena had gripes with junior. Either okay. they didn't move up the ladder when they thought they should have. Uh, some of them owed money that they were never going get to out, get out from under huge amounts of money. Yeah. Uh, others like uh, Nicky Black, when he became a good fella, it was with a stipulation that he never rises above soldier. Wow. That was a rule engraved by Junior Persico because he didn't want to straighten him out. He made him because he was under somebody else at the time, and he was a powerhouse in the Teamsters. He was bringing in a fortune. Yeah. Uh, for, you know, like Mike Franchese. He yeah. was bringing in a fortune with the gas okay. tax, and he yeah. got his button uh, for protection and, yeah. uh, his, you know, just to reward him. Uh, yeah. Which is an bad thing. You know, I'm not saying yeah. he didn't yeah. think he earned it that way. That's how people, you, know, you earn buttons in different ways. And, Correct. Um, yeah. So, uh, where, where were we? I lost my train of thought. No, no, so we were kind of saying why. Okay, so so why Billy went with went with Arena? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly. So all these guys had gripes. Now, I didn't know a hundred percent for sure why Billy went that way until I interviewed Billy for, for my talk show, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Uh, but basically, they all had their reasons. Billy's reason was that when Junior took the stand. And he represented himself, and he admitted he was a good fella, broke three cardinal rules. And if any of us would have done that, we'd be dead. And he's right about that. So that's when you learn it's do as I say, not as I do. I do. Yeah. You know, that's a rule. You're not supposed to take the stand, represent yourself. And Junior did all of this. So it's a gray area. Some people call him around. I mean, I can't say that. I mean, he did 150 years for the you know, for that life. Uh, but he could have been rewarded in other ways for helping out or, you know, there's the, the same thing, you know, there's guys that may not want to come out a hundred percent. They help a little yeah. bit here and there. Uh, maybe it saved his, his son from a couple of life sentences until he just yeah. kept, you know, so anyway, uh, but he yeah. knew about Greg, he knew about my boss yeah. was an informant. They knew for 30 years or for 20 years. So, uh, So, so, so I want to deep dive in the strategy still. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. So they kid a few of your guys, right? And then now it's like open season. I have always mm -hmm. wondered, did Persico or the Persico son or brother, whatever, come to you guys and say, get this, 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 and this guy, or, or was it Greg had enough power to say it's open season. If we see anybody from that side, we're getting them. So what was the strategy? Well, hit back? The, stra he has, the strategies, first of all, both sides were divide and conquer. You know, yeah. we were hoping they would crack and some, some guys would start trickling over, which did happen. They yeah. were hoping to break us down. Eventually, they threatened, the Nikki Black threatened to kill me and my partner, Jimmy, wow. to weaken Greg. So we made him number one target. Uh, and honestly, here's what happened with our strategy. Yeah. Greg was looked up to as the leader. Yeah. Okay. He was protecting Junior. His war was to protect Junior. Now, okay. trying to kill him certainly motivated him further. But if it wasn't for them trying to take over, there wouldn't have been a war. Correct, you know, correct. So they tried to take over. Uh, so our strategy was just to be out there looking. And when they're spotted, take them out. Uh, it wasn't any sneak, you know, like, like we were hiding in trees, although we've done that in the past, you know, or yeah. well, we were, uh, it, we were out there looking every day. We had a scanner. So we were listening to the law as they were following us, we were following our enemies. Uh, and, you know, we met probably four times a day with different heavyweights from our site, whether it was wow. Manhattan, Jersey, yeah. You know, Long Island, we were all over the board meeting meeting other heavyweights, you know, uh, and always wondering why they never come to Brooklyn to meet us. Well, I, I, um, I remember the story that, and, and I, 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 grew, I grew up, I used to go to Brooklyn in the 90s, I used to hang at Decker mm -hmm. Park, and you know, the Burst Coast have their beautiful mansions over there on uh, near near 85th Street. Um, and the Burst Coast were very strong in that area, you, you know, very strong, yeah. kind of to this day, too. Um, but with that being said, though, is 
you guys were thinking of maybe what should we do? And didn't like 50 guys show up as kind of a, a coup de tay, a, a, a force majeure, if you will. And you guys were like, holy shit, you know, not only do you want to stay with you guys, but they, they brought every cousin, uncle and brother. What, what, what was that story? Because I remember hearing it. But I don't recall it. Well, no, we had a small 